Hi, welcome to Naresh Shetty. This is Kishore, and today we are going to continue the inheritance concepts. In previous sessions, we have discussed uh, what is single level inheritance, multi level inheritance, multiple inheritance, hierarchical inheritance, and hybrid inheritance. Today, I am going to discuss about constructors and destructors in inheritance. Okay. Generally, we have discussed what is a constructor, what is a destructor and when they are going to be executed. Now, in inheritance, how the constructors and destructors are going to be executed. Okay. Now, I am going to first of all explain how the constructor is working. Okay. For example, I am going to write one base class. Okay, hash include iostream.h. Now, it is the basic header file for IO. Okay, it is the basic header file for input output operations. Next, hash include conio.h for CLRSCR get CH in our program. Now, I am going to start a class. Okay, now I am going to start a class like this. For example, class okay, test 1. Now, it is the first class, otherwise, directly take the base class. Suppose our concept is what inheritance, that is why in inheritance, what we are using one base class, one derived class, common thing. Now, I am going to change the test 1 to base class. Now, suppose in place of test 1, I am going to write base class, okay, fine. And here, there is a public keyword, for example, public keyword. Now, here the meaning is there is no data member I am going to declare because of it is only sample how this program is executed. Now, public area. In public area, I am going to write a constructor first and actually constructor primary rule is what? The constructor name should be similar to the class name. Okay? The constructor name should be matched with the class name. That is why here base class name. Next, here I want to declare a default constructor first of all. We have discussed that we are having three types of constructors. One is default constructor or non-parameterized constructor or zero parameterized constructor. Second one is what? Parameterized constructor and third one is the copy constructor. Now, I am going to declare first of all default constructor, how the default constructor is working in inheritance. Okay. It is the base class. Now, one more rule for constructor is what? There is no return value. Okay. Never constructor returns value. That is why there is no return data type. Though there is no return data type, directly I am going to start the constructor. Okay. Now, it is a default constructor. Okay, fine. Now, the default constructor started and inside the default constructor, just I want to send some message means I want to print some message. Now, see out it is the message I want to print base class constructor next uh, slash n. Okay. Now, the constructor is closed. Okay. Here it is the base class constructor. Now, here I am going to close the class also. Okay, fine. Now, we have created a base class with uh, one default constructor. Okay, fine. Later, I am going to create, I am going to create the derived class of this base class. Now, class suppose d r, suppose the meaning is derived. Okay. Now, it is the derived class okay. and it is derived from public base. Now, the meaning is what? This derived class created from this base class. Actually, it is called inheritance operator and it tells this class is derived from this base class. Now, here also public. Why because public? Because of there is another rule for constructor. What is that? The constructor or destructor what it may be, they should be declared within the public area. That is why one more public, okay. now public declared. Next, here I am going to declare one more constructor okay, of derived class, now derived. Actually, it is also what 
default constructor ok. Now, it is the default constructor of which class derived class ok fine and here I want to send some message like this see out derived class constructor and here slash n for next line. Now, brackets close class also close ok and now it is the base class and base class is having one default constructor and it is the derived class and the derived class also having one constructor ok. Now, whenever this program is executed or compiled what happens ok and what the compiler is doing. Here derived class actually this derived class created from base class actually which is called inheritance concept. In inheritance concept what happens the base class properties are passed to derived class ok. In inheritance the base class properties are passed to derived class that means what here public area contains only one only one constructor only one default constructor that means now it is passed to derived class now it is passed to derived class and how it is passed and how it is going to bind ok. Whenever the base class is having a constructor ok, whenever the base class is having a default constructor ok and uh, from that base class one derived class is created what happens means the base class default constructor automatically bind with the derived class constructor it is the most important thing whenever the derived class is created from a base class ok and the base class is having any default constructor it is automatically or it is implicitly bind with the derived class default constructor and it is the first line of this program ok. That means, when compilation is completed automatically base class here see this it is the derived class constructor now that is why implicitly means internally the compiler adds this base class constructor here base colon colon base now semicolon ok and we are not adding this one you have to observe this point ok and here the most important thing we are not adding this constructor ok the compiler implicitly adds this base class constructor within derived class constructor and it is the first line it is the most important thing ok and it is conducted by the compiler ok fine. That means, now the default cons default derived class constructor is having base class constructor and derived class constructor ok and that is why what happens. Suppose, from this program we have to derive the object now, now I am going to derive the object ok, just I am going to derive the object ok, it is the main function ok, one main function is executed first CLR SCR I am doing ok, now the total screen is clear. Let us watch it derived D actually D is the what derived class object in this example D is the derived class object you know that when a derived class object is created means base class properties are passed and derived class properties also passed. And now, what happened it is derived class object that means, when it is derived class object means it is having derived class object and the derived class constructor internally having base class constructor na? that means what when this object is created we know that constructor is executed when the object is created when the object is created automatically constructor executed because of uh, they are used to initialize the object itself ok which is called automatic initialization of the object ok. Generally we are using constructors to initialize the objects. Now, the what happens D object created when object created means constructor fires or constructor executed. Now, the point which constructor is executed actually here base class is having a 
constructor, derived class also having a constructor, both are passed to derived class object now, now which class constructor is executed ok and here that is why I have given the clarity. First of all your base class constructor is executed because of in previous example means in previous discussion I have said whenever the derived class is created from base class compiler implicitly adds the base class constructor in first line of derived class destructor that is why what happens whenever this d object created first base class constructor is executed later derived class constructor is executed that is why first you are going to get answer base class constructor in first line. Now slash n is there now that is why what happens in next line derived class constructor also executed that is why always the priority ok whenever you are using the constructors in inheritance always the priority goes to first base class default constructor later default derived class default constructor because of implicitly it is binded and here there is no need of declaration of this one. Now I am going to strike out this one means it is not required because of just I have shown like this it is going to be implicitly added or binded that is why just strike out this line means actually it is not required in our program it is not there ok just I have explained how this process is going uh, then derived d, d is the what object when derived object is created what happens it is going to call derived class constructor but derived is internally having base class that is why first base class constructor later derived class. Now suppose I am going to use get ch program close now the process completed it is how the default constructors are executed in inheritance ok it is how the default constructors are working in inheritance that is why default constructor of base class implicitly bind with derived class constructor default constructor then what about parameterized constructor then what about parameterized constructor actually we have to call the parameterized constructor within derived class constructor remember this when it is parameterized constructor we should have to call the base class parameterized constructor in derived class how it is in this session I am going to start it ok thank you thank you for watching Thank you.